Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be planting out my Insetti Morellii. I'm basically going to be making a forest of them here on my parents' vegetable plot. So I'll quickly show you all the Insettis. They're all lined up along here. These are all the ones that I propagated from one plant in the last update. As you can see they're doing really nicely at the moment. Um, they've actually grown quite a lot recently. So I've had these in my conservatory over winter. They didn't do very well. I kept them barely watered just to keep them from drying out completely. Most of the leaves died back, they weren't looking too good. And then the last three or four weeks what's happened is we've had some nice warm spring sunshine. It's warmed up in the conservatory. And as you can see, they're all putting on lots of nice new growth. They're looking a bit leggy though. That's because they were quite congested and quite close to each other when they were in the conservatory. But they should get plenty of light now and that legginess should disappear. You can also see we've got some nice big leaves starting to grow. Now one unfortunate side effect of having them in the conservatory with less light and then bringing them out here is they're going to get a bit of sunburn. I haven't been able to harden them off as much as I should do. But I know within setis that they store so much energy in their trunk that they can actually respond quite well. Even if all the leaves get killed off, they've got lots of energy stored, they'll come back no problem. So they should do just fine. Be interesting to see how they do in this open site. It is quite an ex windy and exposed site. But what's probably going to happen is I suspect that these are going to, as I say, get a bit damaged to begin with, not look too good. But by the end of the summer in this exposed site with lots of light, they're probably going to become quite nice stocky plants. And the leaves might not be as big, but they should get that really nice dark colour that you get on the foliage with, with this variety of, uh, of Ensetti. So, what I'm going to be doing, as I say, is, is using this site here. The idea this year is we're going to have a bit less maintenance in the vegetable plots. You can see the other vegetable plots are planted up with things like the alliums and the beans, and then we've got loads of root vegetables, potatoes and Jerusalem artichokes over there. This is going to be a bit of a low maintenance plot, a bit like that plot over there, where we don't really need to do much weeding once it's weeded in the first part of the year. We just kind of leave it and it does its own thing. I'll be planting this up with pumpkins. So I've got two pumpkins already. We need a couple more to fill the whole site. They're not big pumpkins, these ones. They should be small variety. And what the plan is, is I'm going to dot this whole area with insettis. It's going to be like an insetti forest. And then the pumpkins are going to grow underneath. It might get a bit shaded out by the end of the summer with the insettis, but we'll see how it does. That's the plan anyway. So what I need to do is I need to remove some of the existing plants. So we've got a lot of weeds that have kind of germinated some some poppies and some chickweed and all sorts. And if I get the time, I might also take out these old pea supports so we can get a bit more space there. But it's not the end of the world if I don't get rid of them now. I've certainly taken up a very small part of this plot. And then we've also got an old kale plant which has gone to flower. So I'll be taking that out. I think we've got some salad already starting under here. So I'll, um, I'll leave that bit, but I'll plant around it. And then when it comes to the end of the summer and the insetis are growing quite big, this area will probably be covered and smothered by the insetis and the, the pumpkins. It's just like a quick, quick salad crop that we're getting at the beginning of the year. And that's the plan anyway. Planting lots of insetti plants. Hopefully it's going to be like a, a forest of insetti. Now I also have quite a few of these back at my house. These are all the ones that are single plants, although I do see there is one just over there, which is a bit of a double plant there. And some of them have been... Uh, sending up some some little pups from the side because I did do a subdivision of this last year So the ones I have back at home they are about five pots But some of those pots have about probably about 15 or 20 small plants coming up in them in them So I'm going to be dividing them as well into individual plants and I will just be using them somewhere in my own garden That's all for this part of the video anyway What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get started clear this site and get it ready for planting. So I've now removed the worst weeds from the site. Now I have left a few, so there's actually some self-seeded uh, opium poppies over here. I've left them because they actually self-seed every year around our vegetable plot and the flowers are so nice that we just let them uh, just do their thing because they really do have some beautiful flowers. So those ones are going to stay. The other weeds, I haven't got every single last weed out from this bottom area. I'm still recovering from a knee injury, so I was thinking of taking these out today, but I think it's a bit much for my knee at the moment, so I'll be leaving these four wigwams for now, and then I've taken out most of the worst weeds from underneath. I've left a few of the poppies, but I've still got some more nettles to take out. Unfortunately, those nettles over there are right at the bottom of a wigwam, so that's a bit difficult to take out without first removing the wigwam, so I'll leave these kind of TP wigwam things for now. I might take them out later once my knee's better. But for now, that's plenty of space for planting anyway. What we will be doing is any bare soil like this down here, 
we're going to be covering that with mulch. We've done that for most of the site. We've also put down manure because this is going to be having pumpkins growing on it. It needs a lot of feed and also the Insetti ventricosums, they need a lot of feed as well, particularly high nitrogen for their leaves. So it's, it's quite a rich site already. But as I say, what we do is we mulch it, we put cardboard down and then we put grass clippings or hedge clippings on top just to make sure whatever we had available. And that's going to keep the weeds down. So it's going to be very low maintenance. And by the end of the season, when the mulch starts to break down, because we've got the ground cover from the pumpkins there shouldn't really be any weeds on this site so it's just a very low maintenance way of doing it you see the section in the middle we've only got some wood what we'll probably do is take off this wood in this in the near future and replace it with cardboard once we get a bit more and then just cover it with a bit more mulch so that's the plan for this anyway so what i'm going to do is go ahead and plant this up I have left this free because my, my mum seems to have planted some salad in here and I'm not sure how far that goes so I'm going to leave this flowering kale for now as well. So I'll just go ahead, I'm just going to lay out all these insettis in a nice spacing in this, in this bed and then I'll start planting them up. So that's now that all the insetti is planted up. As you can see, actually the density of the planting is a bit more than I was expecting. It's actually probably about one per square meter or less. So I did think there'd be plenty of space for the pumpkins. I'm now getting a little skeptical. It just depends how big and fast these insetti actually grow. But certainly the pumpkins will still get some kind of yield. It's just that they might get a bit smothered. So it'll be interesting to see how big these get. Some of the bigger plants, basically because the bigger they are, the more leaf area they have, they kind of have exponential growth compared with these smaller ones down here. So being a bit bigger at the beginning can actually lead to quite a big increase in size by the end of the summer. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. They should do really well here. My parents' garden is right next to the sea, so it's got a very mild climate. It doesn't have any real cold temperatures over the summertime. It stays nice and, and mild the whole summer. It doesn't get too hot, and it is quite a windy garden. So there are a couple of downsides, but I know from experience these insettis are much more wind resistant than most bananas. There was actually a beautiful banana right at the back there. I'll show you some photos. Unfortunately, the frost killed it this year, um, but that one didn't get too badly shredded by the wind. And these are actually in the most shelter spot in the whole garden because we've got the greenhouse to the north there with houses and, and also a hedge. We've also got some uh, trees, we've got the hazel there, we've got a, a Leylandi hedge behind the polytunnel, the whole polytunnel on the side. And then the other direction, we've also got the eucalyptus tree. And then for pan round, there's also the house which protects it a bit from this side. So it's actually a really good location for the insetti. It's the most uh, sheltered spot on the vegetable pot. So I'm expecting pretty good results from this. So what I'll be doing now is I'm going to give these a good watering in, make sure the compost is well washed around the roots. I'll also water them in with a little bit of fertilizer as well, just give them a head start. Although we'll be feeding the whole site and the whole site already has been manured, so the soil should be perfect for them. We just need to make sure we water them enough. This is a sandy site. Although the soil is really rich, you can see here, it's a really beautiful, dark, rich soil. But um, it is very sandy, so you can see when it starts to dry out, it does look very light and there's a lot of sand in it. So it doesn't hold water as well as some soils, despite being full of organic matter, it can dry out quite quickly. So we'll probably need to put some irrigation on this later in the summer if we do have dry weather and this is one of the driest parts of Scotland so we probably will have to irrigate it a little bit but as I say I'm expecting pretty good results from this and I'll see you guys at the end of summer we'll see how they do but I'm expecting by then these will probably be getting to about a meter maybe a meter and a half in height these don't grow as quickly as the green insettis. If this was just a straight species green insettis, I'd expect these to be up to two meters by the end of summer. But with the Morelli variety, we'll see, hopefully a meter. But if we have really nice warm summer, maybe even more. So it's now October and it's around about the end of the growing season for these insettis. So I'd like to give you guys an update on how they're done over the summer and give you a look at them before they get destroyed by the winter storms and also by the frost. As you can see, some of the autumn storms are already rolling in, so the leaves are already very shredded and they're already getting quite a lot of leaf damage. But the growth has been reasonable with these. I did think they would maybe get a bit too big and smother out the pumpkins. That wasn't the case. In, in fact, the pumpkins were smothering out the insettis. For most of the summer, the insettis were struggling quite a bit beneath the leaves of the pumpkin. Part of the reason is I had planted several of these smaller pumpkins here. But what happened is we had uh, a couple of plants from a relative and they were giant pumpkins and you can see especially towards this end they're much bigger leaves and much bigger pumpkins and those ones were quite a bit higher above the insettis but they've still done quite well so what's happened is they've been a bit smothered for the beginning of summer it was then really dry in june which didn't really help them get their roots established july was a bit cool and then august was quite good and september was quite good as well so most of the growth was actually put on over august and september 
But as you can see, they're reasonable size now, particularly the ones towards the back. I'll show you them in a minute. They're definitely the largest. So as I say, they were smothered for a while, but now they're now above the leaves of the pumpkin plants and they're, they're growing reasonably well. As it is October now, the light levels are getting really quite short and, and weak in this part of the world, so they're not going to put on much growth. So this garden at my parents' house is next to the coast, and the sea temperatures are quite a bit warmer this year than normal, so I'm not expecting any hard killing frosts to really come until about November, December for this garden. My garden, we've already had a touch of frost back in September, but here, these will probably keep growing very slowly with the low light levels right up until the first frost in probably November or December time but these leaves will be very ripped and shredded because this is a very exposed windy garden and so this is probably the best they're going to look for a while. Now it's the same, they were looking a bit better a month or so ago, the leaves were a lot less ripped but the, the plants were smaller so they are looking a bit bedraggled at the moment. You can see the pumpkins have done well, we've got loads and loads of these smaller pumpkins so you maybe see some down there. We've got these small pumpkins, which are the, as I say the small edible ones and we've had, I don't know how many there are coming on these, there's probably about 30 or 40 of them. They're all kind of growing all over the place. Lots of small ones, doing really well. And then I'll take you around to the other side where you'll see the other pumpkins. They're much bigger, they're the giant pumpkins. And we've also got some of the slightly larger insetis here. Now I could have had these grow a bit faster probably if I had fed them more. I didn't really feed them much since they went in. Gave them an initial feed and since then they've just kind of been sitting there. Uh, just with it, whatever feed is left in the soil. So if I give them more nitrogen feed, they probably could have grown a bit faster and a bit bigger. You can see here, we've got some more of the giant pumpkins. Now they could have got even bigger, these pumpkins, if we had reduced them down to just one or two per plant, but we're not looking for giant pumpkins, we're looking for ones for eating, so we're just kind of left numerous uh, large pumpkins. So none of these have got particularly huge, but they're still a decent size. So these are the biggest in Seti anyway, towards the back. It might be because this area is a little bit more sheltered, We've got the greenhouse here to the north and we've got the point on to the west and then we've also got around the side here some very tall Jerusalem artichokes so these have been a bit more sheltered from the wind they've done a bit better you can see they are a decent size they have grown much bigger than what they were in spring they are now big enough that i should be able to dry store some of these you can see the trunk and that is getting quite big and they will size up just ever so slightly as the uh, as the autumn goes on what I should notice is that the trunk will size up with the colder weather and they won't put out a huge number of more leaves but they'll size up slightly more and then I'll dig them up and dry store them for the winter and plant them again next spring. So the Inseti jungle this year hasn't been as, been as big as I had hoped but the growth has still been pretty reasonable. If I was to do it again next year with the same plants they probably would be up to about two meters in height as the growth tends to be exponential. The bigger the plant the more leaves it has the faster it can grow. So these are all very small plants when they first went in. That's why they haven't got that big this year. But if I do this again next year, they would easily get over the height of me. They'd be really big plants. So that's all for this video. Just a little experiment to see how the Insetis would do as a little jungle, just because I had a lot of spare plants this year. And they worked really well with the pumpkins. The only thing I'd do differently probably is make sure the plants are a little bit bigger before they go in the, in the site, so they can get above the pumpkins. But it hasn't been a big issue, they've just stretched to the light and they managed to get above the pumpkins and still grow reasonably well, even though they had quite a bit of competition earlier on with being shaded out. So that's all for this video, hope you guys enjoyed it, I'll see you next year with some more Inseti Venticos and Banana videos.